Hello yogis. Today's class is all about balance. One of the more challenging aspects of yoga is the ability to balance in postures. My experience has taught me that balancing all comes down to our ability to focus and our ability to stay grounded at the same time. Today's class, we're going to run over some of the techniques that you might use to help you balance in pretty much every single yoga practice and every yoga asana that requires balance. So if you've been looking to improve your balance in your yoga practice, then this class is for you. Let's get to it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, you can support me by pressing the subscribe button or liking the video. And at the end of the class, it means a lot if you tell me what you thought and you let me know how I can improve. The first thing that I'm going to get you to do is to ground down into your feet and to ground down into your sit bones. Now, the reason we do this is because practicing grounding down helps us become aware of the base underneath us. It's only using this awareness that we're able to keep our focus and our attention grounded on the balancing foot normally or the balancing arms. And it's without this focus that we lose our balance and we fall. And now in a moment, we're going to close our eyes and I'd like you to focus on pressing down actively and feeling the space underneath you. Take your hands onto your thighs, close your eyes, or if you don't like that, you can soften your gaze, just kind of blur it and look down. And let's take five deep breaths here. As you breathe in, imagine that you're lengthening up through the top of your spine, so you're using your base to grow. And as you exhale, imagine your hips sinking down and feeling heavy. Take four more breaths like that. Tune into the space underneath your feet and your hips. Notice if you're pressing more into your left foot or your right foot. Can you press down into them equally? Notice if you're pressing more down into your left bone on the right side or your right hip bone on the opposite side. Hopefully now you've tuned into that space underneath you. If you want, you can open your eyes gradually, but try to keep your awareness on the space underneath you. Almost let my voice become a drone in the background of what's going on for you right now. Lean a little more into the left hip and notice the weight shifting to one side and change sides, lean to the other side and notice the weight shifting into the opposite side. Now bring the weight to center and shift backwards. Notice the weight move into the hip bones. Keep your awareness there and move the weight forward. And notice that it moves into your feet. It's that level of awareness and that level of attention, you can bring it to center now, that will help you balance. Now let's put it into practice a little more tangibly. What I want you to do is to kind of tune out the outside world what we're going to do is we're going to come down onto our hands and our knees and immediately become aware of the space underneath your hands, underneath your knees and underneath your feet. Take a big breath in and as you exhale, move your shoulders forward and feel the weight shift into your hands. And then feel the weight shift backwards as you lean a little further back with those hips. And just keep rocking forwards and backwards and feeling the weight move. We're going to move on from this in a second, but I just want to give you the experience of noticing what it feels like to shift our weight in general rather than into our hip bones and our feet. Good. And it's really important now that we practice moving left and right one more time. So move to your left side. Notice the weight in the left hand, the left knee, the left foot and change sides. And then come back to center. Cool. From here, I want you to step your left foot forward 
and just start moving the weight around, so drawing circles with your left knee. Notice the weight in your big toe, your little toe, and this one's a little bit funny, but in the left side of your heel and the right side of your heel. They call these the four corners of your feet, so the space underneath your big toe, your little toe, the left side of the heel, the right side of the heel. It's a little strange, I'll admit, but it comes into practice later. Now step your right foot forward to the top of the mat, bend your knees, and just start to circle your hips and do the same thing and see if you can bring the weight equally into the left side, the right side, and into the heels on the left side and the right side. Okay, good. If I haven't lost you yet, well done. We're almost there. We're gently going to place our hands onto our thighs and I want you to slowly roll yourself up and as you do so, keep the weight grounded in your feet equally. Keep a balance. Can you do that for me? Good. Notice if it shifts or if it wobbles. That steadiness that we require in our balancing poses comes from what are called stabilizer muscles. They run either side of our knee and our ankle and our hips, and they're the ones that keep us from wobbling to the left and the right side. Now the final component that I want to pass and share on to you today, which is important in your balance postures, is what is called drishti. Drishti is a yoga technique. I hope some text is coming up on the screen right now. Drishti is a yoga technique that asks you to practice your yoga postures with sukha and stira. Sukha is concentration and stira is steadiness. So practicing your postures with concentration and steadiness. Now to do that in a tangible way, what I want you to do now, find a spot on the floor in front of you that isn't moving, so it can't be a dog or a cat or a tree outside, for example. Just find a spot on the floor in front of you. Take your hands onto your hips. And for the next three breaths, let's just practice grounding down. We need to take the tone of the class down a little bit. Take a deep breath in. And a slow breath out. As you exhale here, I want you to focus on pressing down into your feet. Next, I want you to lean forward into your toes. Feel the weight shift forward. Keep staring at that spot. Keep calm and carry on. Lean into your heels. Lean into the left foot more than the right foot. And lean into the right foot more than the left foot. Now I'd like you to draw a spiral with your hips and imagine the spiral is narrowing so your focus and your balance on the underside of your body, which is the feet in this case, is slowly narrowing down to a central point. And once you've found that central point, or thereabouts, hold there and notice how the weight is evenly distributed between both feet. It's evenly distributed between the left and the right side and between the toes and the heels. That is your steadiness and that focus on the spot out in front of you, that is your concentration. So your sukha, your stira, the drishti technique. Now what I'd like you to do is lean a little bit more into your left foot. Feel the weight shift there and ground down into the floor. Then lift up onto your right tip toes, nice and slow. I'm going to hold there for a moment. Regain our balance if you've lost it. Keep looking at that spot in front of you. Take a deep breath in. And just like at the start of the class, I want you to practice grounding down into that left foot. Make it heavy. Good. When you're ready, Keeping your awareness there. Remember, we can move our arms and move and look to the left and right or whatever, but we want to keep our awareness on the spot where we're balancing from. I want you to now lift your right foot off the floor and just bring 
your right knee out in front of you to a nice right angle. Good. Now take your right foot and if you can, take it to your left thigh. If that's a little bit too high for you, you can bring it onto your left calf. Now the thing that's going to keep you here is the stabilizer muscles from a physical perspective. But from a mental perspective, it's sukha and stira, it's concentration and steadiness. If you find yourself getting agitated or thinking, oh, I'm over this class, gotcha. That's exactly what we don't want to happen. And it's going to require patience and a dropping of your ego to bring you there. Find that spot on the floor if you lost it. I just lost it then. Keep grounding down to that left foot and see if you can bring that right foot onto the inside of that standing leg. Whatever height your right foot is at, I want you to press your right foot and your left leg together. Take your hands through to your chest. Just breathe here. Hopefully you're holding this balancing pose. If you are, I'm so proud of you. Good job. Just keep breathing here. Oh, and I've lost it. I looked away for a second. I lost my sook and my stirrer. But I can come back. That's all good. Good. If you want to take this further, you can lift your arms up to the sides and reach your fingertips out wide. And then you can have a go now at changing the point at which you're focusing, but just change it once. So make up in your mind where you're going to look first and then look at it. I'm going to look at the camera lens. I'm staring into the camera lens. Don't look at me, it'll distract you. Good, and notice that, hopefully you too, but I can definitely hold my pose here. I feel strong and stable. The next thing you could try and do is engage the muscles of your left thigh. Have a go at that. Take another big breath in, extend up through the top of your head. And as you exhale, this is key as well, is coming out of the balancing pose. See if you can lower down with control instead of going bam. Cool, let's change sides, change your drishti where you're focusing. Press into your right foot. And it's so tempting to just go up into it and think we've got it right away. Give me a little bit more of your time, just a tiny bit, 30 seconds extra. We're just gonna refocus and regather ourselves. Bring your hands to heart center, close your eyes, take a big breath in. Start to circle in that spiral, making it narrower and narrower. Feeling the weight move from your toes to your right foot, to your heel, to your left foot. Or the other way around, depending on which way you're spiraling. Become aware of the space underneath your feet. Become aware of the temperature there. Really feel that space. You can come to a central point. Find a balance. Take a big breath in. Exhale to ground down. Open your eyes and then come up onto your left tiptoes. Find your drifty point, the spot at which you're going to gaze with steadiness and concentration. When you're ready, Lift up onto those left tiptoes and then bring the left foot onto that inside of the right leg. Find your balance again, find your drifty point if you've lost it. Take a deep breath in, remember to press the left foot into the right thigh. And if you want, you can bring your hands through to heart center, then inhale to open them up. Spread your fingers out. Imagine your fingers are the branches of your tree and they're trying to reach the sun, so they're really spreading out. Oh, there goes my ankle again. If you fall, what language do you use to bring yourself back? Do you speak to yourself with kindness or with criticism? I've definitely come to a place of kindness now, but when I started yoga, I was quite harsh on myself. And it's like, why? Why is that necessary? 
because I need to be better or like that's that's pretty shitty reason and just makes me feel bad so speaking to yourself with kindness when you fall or saying today's not my day or even if you've done it in the past and you can't do it like you did it in the past and just going to your level today it's totally okay Better that than nothing. Better that with kindness than forcing yourself with cruelty or criticism. Take another big breath in, wherever you're at, and see if you can exhale and lower down with control. Sometimes our ankles can get a little tight after that, so shake them out. I'm gonna sit down, you can keep going if you'd like. Or you can sit down as you'd like. That same concentration, where then we're moving from a crow pose, so we're balancing on our hands, whether we're moving into a handstand or a shoulder stand or a headstand, any yoga pose that you use, we use drishti, we use concentration and we use steadiness, not only in the body, but also in the mind. By focusing on the space underneath us, and by incorporating our drishti, you are going to improve your balancing postures tenfold. Remember that when you fall out of them, come into them with kindness again. Remember that we all fall sometimes and that is okay and it's a part of life and that's our ability to go and get back up that is admirable. So you might as well do it with love. It's just gonna keep happening. I hope that you enjoyed it though. And if you did, it would mean so much to me for you to let me know in the comments below. I genuinely mean that. And if you haven't subscribed already and you want to see more of these videos, please subscribe and let me know in the comments below that this is what you want to see because I have so much more knowledge I could share with you if that's what you want to see. I hope to see you again and good luck balancing. Namaste.